GoPro died on me. Yeah, the GoPro just died. I guess it went off. Or either it got full or something. I don't know if I'll be able to see the comments now. Let's see. Welcome to... Okay, yeah, I can. I don't know if you all can see this, though. Uh, so... Ted and, and Matt there were then were talking about how that local runs you a lot then, it sounds like. So, hmm. So that's definitely something to consider as well. Which honestly, for me, I still, I mean, that that long of a, that, that many hours isn't good because then you don't really have much time when you get home. But as long as I can get some time with my family at the end of the day, to me, I feel like I would like that better than being gone the whole week, me personally. But I may be wrong. I'm speaking uh, out of no experience on this, so. I have to learn that. Let me see. Put this on this mount. There we go. There's one person. Sorry, my uh, my GoPro died or something on me. Put that down. Get some air in here. It's fogged up in here. But yeah, Ted, Ted and uh, Matt were saying that local seems like it would be uh, local seems like it would be. I guess just they work you a lot. It sounds like you don't really get much time uh, at the end of the day with your family either way. But I still would rather have that than I would not getting to see my family at all. You know, personally, me personally, I would. Here soon, I'll probably end this live though. Um, there's not really many people on here right now and not only that um, I think I'll probably be going back there here soon So I'm gonna go ahead and open my doors here soon and go ahead and go back there because hopefully I don't run out of time Like I said my trainer before he said he got almost home and then ran out of time and uh, Then his wife had to come get him Well, we won't be able to do that because I'm not gonna ask my wife to get out with my kids in the truck on these wet roads I'll just have to stay for the night so Hopefully, I've got three hours still, so that should be plenty of time. Let's see. Yeah, it should be plenty of time. I'm not sure how far I am from home exactly here, but not too far, I don't think. That GoPro has a really good picture. That really wide. Like, now I'm on the phone, you see it's not very wide. Let's see. There's the, there's the docks where I had to back in last time. See those trucks there? But see, they got dogs over here too. I'm guessing I'm probably gonna go to those same ones back there that I went to last time though. But yeah, I think this is week nine, if I'm not mistaken, down. Lots of other people are getting in the truck and you know, they're, they're getting their permits. They're, they're in the program right now. The, GYCDL program. Some of them are, are with the trainer, and uh, I'm, I'm talking to, to many that are in those stages. I mean, and so that's very neat. And to hear people say that my videos are helping them, that makes me happy. It does, because I enjoy doing the videos anyways. When I'm out there and I'm doing these videos, I don't feel so alone, you know. Like even though I'm just talking to my phone or to a camera, you don't feel like you're completely by yourself, because you are alone when you're out here like this. Unless you bring your dog or something with you, or, or uh, your kid. Which you have to be here six months before you can do that because I am definitely planning to bring Carter with me some my oldest because they have to be 10 They told me they have to be at least 10 years old Well, we've got 12 people on here now that kind of popped out of nowhere I'm, I'm still wanting to get a dog too. I'm just wondering, you know, because I heard I see people with dogs out here And it's I can definitely see how that would be a good thing But at the same time I could see how it could have some negatives too because I feel like you'd have to stop more frequent and stuff like that. Like today, I didn't stop much. I got 500 miles and I still had, by the time I got here, you know, I could I could get 650 miles a day probably if they would let me. But they're not going to, they're sending me home, so. But this week, I averaged, if I ain't mistaken, right around 500 a day this week. Like there was one, some days that I, I had 450 and I knew that the day before I got 550, so I just quit at 450, you know. And, uh, and then the next day I started again. So that's that's around 2,500 miles a week. I'm pretty happy with it. I, I've yet to get a week like that. 
Uh, so this week may actually be the best week I've had yet. I think there's a way to look on this computer here and see how many miles I've got. Yep. Oh, yeah, I had a good week. Yeah, I had a good week. Let me add that up real quick. I may have I may have got 25. Yeah, I had a good week this week. <laughs> I may have got 25. Let me add that up real quick and see. I'm happy with that. I, talk, I call my wife a lot and I tell her, hey, I got 500 miles a day or I got this amount of miles a day and stuff like that, you know. So that makes me, it makes me happy when I get, get a lot of miles. Let's see here. Where's the old calculator? All right. I'm going to add these up real quick and just see how many I got this week. Because I have people ask me that every now and then too. Oh, right at it. I got 2,466 miles is what I got. So I got I got almost, that's the most miles I've got yet. So my next check should be pretty good. 2,466 miles. So that's pretty good. It is. Because I talked to a guy, it was that Swift or Snyder one. I was at a place and, and me and him were in the office in there and I talked to him and I asked him, I said, you know what, about what do you get on miles a week? And he said, on a good week, about 400. And I said, that's a good week? 400 no i wasn't trying to say it like that to him but i was thinking to myself wow that's that doesn't sound very good pretty windy Roll that window up a little bit 400 isn't doesn't sound too good to me i mean really what i want is 500 a day oh there you are glitchy i drove 13 years then got a yard jockey job making 28 an hour did that the last seven years it's much easier than worrying about traffic and directions all the time that makes sense 28 dollars an hour is pretty good money too and you're home every day so yeah, that's that's awesome. I've noticed those guys are really good at backing where they do it all the time. And then it seems like those ones that they use, those trucks that they use, are like made for it, aren't they? They turn almost on a dime, don't they? The trucks that they got. And uh, it doesn't... Uh, I I seen a guy one day when I locked my keys in my truck. I, I watched him because he had to get around me and and park one on a, on a dock. And I was kind of in the way because I locked my keys in there. And I couldn't move my truck. I had to wait on a locksmith. That cost me $200. So, uh, hard lesson learned, um, as I normally do. But uh, I noticed that, like, the way they make those trucks is, like, it won't, uh, the trailer doesn't hit the cab like it will on this. It'll jackknife on this. On that, it doesn't hit it. So, they're, they're made to turn uh, on a dime, it seems like. I have my, oh, there's Willie on wheels. I have my phone interview today at 3.30. That's awesome, Willie. That's big progress, then. What is today? I wonder, uh, well, it's, it's, it depends on how soon you'd want to start, but if you've got that today, Willie, they might would offer you Monday. This Monday or next Monday one, which they'll tell you to get there Sunday probably to the hotel. They did me. I had to get to the hotel in Gary, Indiana, which was about a six-hour drive for me from Kentucky where I'm at. I drove about six hours to the hotel, and they wanted me to get there Sunday. They, I think they said before 5 o'clock p.m. or something like that. And so I got into the hotel, checked in, and then the I hadn't met anybody at that point. And thankfully, I got a room to myself. I had no roommate the whole time I was there, which I really was happy that I had two beds in there. But uh, I was they, for whatever reason they were sending me to the Wisconsin terminal because they said it was mainly van, and uh, and that uh, Gary Indiana terminal was mainly flatbed. But there's all, there's more vans at the Gary Indiana terminal than flatbed, so I'm not sure why they said that. But they ended up sending me to Gary, and where they did that last minute, I didn't have a roommate the whole time, so I was really happy about that. Congratulations, though, Willie, on that. Let us know when you start and everything and how it's going. Yep, I punched in and out after nine hours. I could back in up to 30 trailers in one hour. Oh, wow, that's a lot. 30 in an hour, you're getting a... That's a lot of experience then. So you're talking about hundreds, over 100 trailers a day then. Hundreds, possibly, if you're doing that many consistently. So yeah, when you do something like that, you get a you get a different level of experience, you know. I used to do commercial lawn care, and I thought I knew how to weed eat good until I started there with those guys, and then they passed me up one day, and I stood there watching them fly up through there with the weed eater, and I realized, wow, I'm not very good at weed eating. Then after being there for about, you know, three or four months, I could keep up with those guys. It's a four and a half hour drive for me. I'll need a week to give my job notice. So possibly next Monday then, you think, maybe, Willie, possibly. 
Is your name Willie or Jason? Willie on wheels. I seen Jason on something for some reason. I don't know where I, it was on YouTube somewhere, but I don't. So is your name Willie or Jason? If you don't mind saying. Four and a half hour drive. That's a pretty good drive too, though. Uh, whenever I, they, they flew me, uh, or no, my trainer dropped me off at Wisconsin. Well, after I finished with my trainer, they, they got me a rental car and I drove from that rental car from Wisconsin to home. And one day it took, I think nine and a half hours drive. And I did it pretty much consistent. I got tired at one point and drove and, drove and parked and slept in that car for about 30 minutes. And then I went back at it because I wanted to get home. But that's how they got me home after was a rental car. I had never been on a plane before until I started with rail. And then uh, the first plane I got on, we did. it was a connected flight, if I ain't mistaken. <clears throat> or maybe that was the second time. I can't remember how that worked. I've, I've flown twice with rail. Well, I've been on three planes altogether. One was a connected flight, so they flew me from Lexington, Lexington Kentucky to uh, Texas. I don't know why they put me on a connected flight. And then from Texas, I went to uh, Nebraska, and that's where I met my trainer. Jason Williams. They called me Will and Willie in the Army. Okay, gotcha. So you served in the Army. You got some experience then. That's a, that's a different kind of experience, I'd say, ain't it? Will and Willie in the army. Do you want to? Should we call you? Should I call you Willie or, or Will or Jason? What would you want to be called? That way, when I see your name, I'll know what to call you and everything. He, uh, Willie's the one that talked about the other day uh, how that he got his permit. I mentioned him in a video because I thought that was awesome. I could tell he was happy when he commented because that is a big accomplishment. It is. Uh, that that's the first one of the first steps to starting a, a career with this. If you want it, you know. And it can be a great career. I'm surprised these people haven't called me yet, but them guys are still sitting there too, so they must be taking a while. That means they'll probably take a while to load me, and hopefully they don't take too long. Cause, but I'm I'm happy with that amount of miles. Twenty four hundred and sixty six. That's the most I've ever got. So that, without a doubt, should be a thousand plus. That check. Really, maybe more like eleven hundred. I've noticed they're taking four oh four oh one k out of my checks. And I got to call them. I'm going to tell them to quit doing that because I'm not planning to retire with rail. So I don't want them taking out 401k. I think they took like $40 or something out of this last check for 401k. And then every check they've still been taking out for the locks they gave me too. A little bit. Not a lot. But they do that until you pay the locks off. Seven years in the Army. Three tours in Iraq. You can call me Jason. Okay, I'll call you Jason. Seven years in the Army and three tours in Iraq. Wow. So you've seen some things and you've had some experiences, I'd say then. Three tours in Iraq. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you've seen some things then, I'd say. I've heard some stories. I've heard some stories about that. I respect that, though. I, I respect the, the bravery of the men and women that do that, you know. I've, 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 I've researched that a lot, too. Now that I've gotten uh, a little older, I've, I'm a lot more interested in history and, and, and the, the wars and stuff like that. I like to try to learn about it a little bit. Seven years is a long time. Thanks for your service, Jason. Yes, thank you, Jason. Thank you for that. Yep, I have a I have a big respect for the bravery too, because I don't think lots of people can comprehend that really. Who was that sniper? The one they they ended up making a movie on him. He and uh, he gave a guy. You all know who I'm talking about. I can't remember the name of the movie or nothing, but anyways, uh, he was a sniper in the army. And he ended up getting shot by a guy that he was giving a training course to or something. But anyways, the point I was making with that guy was he said that uh, most Americans don't understand war. And I believe that's probably true. Not that I've been there. My little brother was in, in it for a little while. Um, I never had, I never have been. Um, and I actually started to a long time ago before I had my kids. And what stopped me at that time, uh, they, and, and I'm, I'm not proud of this at all. I'm actually ashamed to say this, but a long time ago, I was 19 years old, I got a DUI. And uh, they told me I had to get that taken care of before I could uh, join the Army because I called and was going to join too. I called a recruiter and spoke to him on the phone. They said I had to take care of that first. I ended up never getting into it. Chris Kyle, that's his name. Yep, he was a SEAL. Yep, Chris Kyle. So he he was the one that said that. And I, and I think what he said was probably very true. Willie, or... Jason, you can confirm that probably, I'm, whether it is or not. 
but that most Americans probably don't understand it at all. You know, you hear about it and stuff like that, but being over there and being in it, I'm sure is completely different. Uh, I, I don't think you really can comprehend that probably unless you are in it, probably. There's a lot going on in the world right now, isn't there, with these wars and stuff like that. I try to keep up with stuff like that a little bit, you know. I think it's important uh, to an extent to not worry yourself to death, but to at least keep up with stuff. Or I like I like to anyways, me personally. And there's a lot going on right now with, with things that ain't looking good. Almost seems like on the brink of wars all over the place, it seems like. Any of y'all see that eclipse the other day? I was in Indiana when that happened, and they were talking about it like being a total eclipse or something like that it got i could definitely tell when it happened i had sunglasses on and i took them off and when i looked i realized yeah wow it's getting darker yeah i'd say so something you have to experience to fully understand i'd say so yeah it affects people too in different ways that i mean in, in serious ways some people that come back from it i don't know if you ever heard of a a, a man named uh because i seen i seen he was on youtube in a video one time but his name was dustin gross well, he was from the county I'm from, and uh, he went over there at a very young age. I remember when he did, because he was a great under me. I went to school with his brother. His name was uh, Dustin Gross, and uh, I think he was a Marine, maybe, though. I'm not sure. But anyways, uh, pretty much as soon as he got there, their vehicle hit like a roadside bomb or something like that, and uh, ended up killing him pretty much as soon as he got there. Too. They, they named a highway after him there where I live in Jeffersonville. It's... Uh, I think it's, I can't remember the name exactly, what, what they call it, but Dustin Gross Highway or something like that. But uh, I knew his brother. And yeah, I couldn't imagine the things you see and stuff like that. I've heard stories from some people before. And uh, it's, I'm interested in stuff like that. It's interesting. Not not because it makes me happy, but it's interesting to know that the, the, the bravery of some people. And it's very easy to sit back because... Because I'm not for, uh, you know, just being violent for no reason, but for protecting your country and stuff like that, yeah. Uh, when you're, when you're, when you're, I, all down through time they've done that. So, yeah, I respect, I respect the bravery in that for sure. So, Jason, I'll call you Jason then. So, you've got your permit. Somebody else told me they got their permit. If I had it, if, oh, it is connected. Okay, I was going to say, I didn't think my hotspot was connected to this. Well, let us know how that goes, Jason. Let us know how it goes for you. Let's see. I was going to try and find who else that was. Because he had commented a few different times, this guy, about trucking and had some questions. A girl asked me about insurance the other day, too. She thought that you had to get your own insurance in order to start with rail. And I said, I said, no, rail takes care of that. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. Sorry, I'm looking through these comments here. Okay, there he is. Donnie. His name's Donnie. I got my permit. Never felt so much joy. So congratulations to him too if he sees this. Can I ask why you don't monetize your channel? You'd probably make a decent income if you did. I actually used to make a decent amount of income from it. Especially my shorts. Uh, my shorts is where most of my income came from. Uh, I've got one short that's got, I think, 36 million views. And I even got a shorts bonus. when I, I was in it before. I was monetized before. And I got a shorts bonus. And the bonus, that month I ended up getting around 500 or something like that. Just from those shorts uh, mainly. Um, but the reason why is because the, the the ads that they put on your videos, I don't I don't approve of them in the least bit. And uh, I mentioned it to YouTube numerous times that I didn't like the ads they were putting on my videos, and I wanted to change that. And uh, it seemed like they actually got worse. And now I'm, and I may be be thinking that they may not have. But anyways, uh, I didn't approve of the ads they were putting on my videos. And I knew that you know, so I can either keep these ads and make a little extra money, and and allow something that I don't believe in and that I know is wrong or I can quit and just quit with the money make my own money you know so that's what I'm doing but yeah that was my goal when I started YouTube was to get some extra income from it and I did and I still get 
uh, let's see, I've got some things here somewhere. I've got two things. Well, this is one of them here, actually. Now, this thing's awesome. It actually makes your phone charge really fast. But I get affiliate things all the time still. Like, people send me... Every month, I get numerous people that will send me uh, requests or offers to join, uh, like, an affiliate program. And they'll send me products for free. And then uh, I put a link to that product after I make a video, and I get a portion of the sales from it and stuff. But that's the reason why, though, if... The, answered your question i'm just i don't approve of the uh i don't approve of their ads if they had a way that you could you know uh, choose what kind of ads which i think they should honestly where you can choose what kind of ads you want to allow in your videos then i would have stuck with it but they but they don't to me i would never put ads on there because that's me yeah me me either with that with the top they've got i mean if it was stuff like that i can relate to and that i'm not against you know I'd be fine with that, but the things that are littering my video, I'll just be frank with you about it, and, and I'm pretty, I have been like this way on my channel from the beginning, like for since I started with firewood. I, my first video was a bushcraft video, and then I started posting firewood videos. I told my wife back then, I said, Chassie, I'm already doing this work. I did lawn care and landscaping for five years. Uh, started my own business, and I did that for five years, and I said, you know, I can make, I see all these other people doing good. I can, I didn't expect my YouTube channel to take off the way that it did though when I did firewood. That's true. I see some that aren't children friendly. Really? Yeah. Really sexual stuff. Yes. I agree what you said. If you can choose the ad, then that would be, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that should, stuff should not be forced upon people. And you, what you see with YouTube is that they're trying to force people to accept these things that not everybody accepts, but they're forcing it upon you. My kids get on YouTube, and now I don't hardly let them on YouTube no more. I, they get on mainly a thing called Kids YouTube because they would get on stuff, and they would they know what's right and wrong, and they would tell me, Daddy, there's a bad ad. And I would look, and it would be a man with makeup on, dressed up like a woman, and I ain't trying to be mean. Like somebody commented the other day on one of my videos because I posted, uh, I'll, I'll just say this very quickly. I'm very much against a man dressed like a woman or a woman dressing like a man. I'm very much against it. I believe in the Bible. I'm old-fashioned. I know we're getting off subject here, maybe in a way, but but you asked a question, and that and that's a good question. Um, but that's why that, those uh, those things are far more important to me than making a little bit of money from YouTube, a little bit of extra money from YouTube. And before I even started my channel, I knew that YouTube was kind of like that, but I didn't know. I thought there would probably be a way that, that I could you know choose the ads that I that would be allowed, but that never. Uh, was an option for me. If it was, I never found it. Um, but yeah, I told my wife, I said, uh, I said, I might as well, I'm doing this work. I might as well record it anyways. And then uh, what really got my subscribers up was the shorts. Just cause like I said, some have like 36 million, 20 some million. And all it is was me splitting a piece of wood. So <laughs> it took off from there. I've met some, I've met some uh, very friendly people on YouTube through firewood uh, through firewood and through uh, trucking. I've actually met more people in person in what little time I've been doing trucking now than I did in firewood the whole time I did it. So that's pretty neat. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm leaving work, headed back to Ohio. I'll let you know how they... All right, thank you, Jason. Sorry, I just now seen your comment. I wish you the best with it. Yeah, Clint. If if the if they if they would allow you to choose what type of ad you put on there, but I'm not. Uh, I wouldn't even feel right. I wouldn't even feel right profiting from things that I that I know are wrong. I know are wrong. You know, and when I read it in the Word of God, men don't can't persuade me otherwise. That's that's how I feel about it. I heard a preacher say this before, and uh, I really liked it because I know it's true. And he said, he said it don't make no difference to me what you think. He said it's what thus saith the Word of God. He said. And that's how it is. What does God say, you know, about it? That's the way I look at it. No matter what it is. Um, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, let God be true and every man a liar. So that's how I look at things. When men, Because men can get very emotional about things, can't they? They can put on an act and, and convince a lot of people if they don't know what to look for. But I don't get deceived so easily because I know what to look for. The Lord taught me a little bit about it. But yeah, like you said, really sexual stuff. And uh, just stuff I don't agree with, you know. Stuff, I, stuff I'd be, I, I'm, a, I'd be ashamed for somebody to click on one of my videos and for it to pop up while they're watching. So that's why I ended up leaving that. And, uh, and it, it, it took quite a while, you know. Well, actually, it built pretty quick though, really, within a year. 
I'd say within a year, I got to around 100,000. Within a year, 90,000, something like that. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the reason I left that. But I, but I am still glad that I get the affiliates and stuff like that. Like they, the mount that this phone is sitting on right now, actually a company sent me that and they sent me a Bluetooth receiver and something else. I've got a moisture meter at home. I still got to do, I still need to do a year review on the Brunt boots that Brunt sent me. And, uh, that's something I actually need to get soon as a, as a new pair of boots. Cause I about wore them Brunt's out. Anyways, though, I think I'll be pulling in there for too long, hopefully, because I've not got, hopefully I'll make it home today. Yeah, I've still got two, two hours and 54 minutes, but at the same time, if they take as long with me as they're taking with those guys, I don't know if I'll make it home or not, but, uh, but that's the thing too. I, I'll, I'll make that clear. I'm not, I'm not ever trying to be offensive with things like that, but, uh. With what the Word of God says, I believe in standing on that. And I know like lots of people ain't interested in that. And that's, I've had many people come to me, believe me, uh, while I've had my channel. I've had it almost two years and come and say, your channel is not about that. Why are you putting that on there? Well, my channel is about whatever I want it to be about. And I ain't saying that in an offensive way. But uh, if I want to put scriptures and talk about the Word of God, I'm going to do that. If people don't like that, then head on out. That's what I say. And I ain't trying to be mean with that. And I ain't saying you at all. I ain't saying you all that mentioned that, but I'm saying like the other day, a guy commented and said something about watch with all this homophobia or something like that. Cause I am against homosexuality. Yes, I a hundred percent. I am. I'm, I'm with what I, I stand on the Bible with what it says. A hundred percent. I don't believe in changing because everybody else around you is changing. I don't believe in that. I believe in standing on what's right. Even if it's you against a thousand, you know, that's how it should be. Unfortunately, we're in a time right now where it seems like much of the, of the uh, people in the world are changing. Uh, f to things that aren't good in a way that isn't good. And uh, I'm not for that. Uh, used to, you used to have examples in the, in the older men and women. And nowadays, you, you're, you, the older men and women are trying to dress uh, to, to look younger and act younger and fit in with the younger generation. And it's really a shame to see, really. When I was a little, when I was a little boy, which was just in the 90s, you know, because I'm only uh, 32. But when I was a little boy, I, I looked up to men and women. You know, I, I could see that they had a maturity about them. They would tell me I was wrong in doing things. Now you've got them joining in with them and encouraging them to do it. Mothers and dads acting more like brothers and sisters to their children instead of parents. And it's a shame, really. I talk about things like this sometimes. I haven't really done it on lives very much, but I do in videos sometimes. I think a lot about things like, and, I, and I see the things in the world right now and and I see what people are really concerned with. And it seems like people are just really concerned with material things, honestly, in the time that we're living in now and not really enough with uh, the more important things. That's why I think you see a lot of uh, moms and dads nowadays that are uh, both are, both of them are working to try to, you know, build up all kinds of things. And they're letting a the daycare raise their kids. You know, I, I don't like that myself. Um, I love my wife being at home with my children. And me, me providing for my household, as the Bible tells me to do. And uh, to me, that's very valuable time that my wife gets with my kids, you know, at home. So to me, that's very important. And uh, there's lots of people that once you talk about things like this, they'll run away. They don't want to hear about them. They want to talk about them. So, and I do realize that. That's why I've never really done it on live. I usually just talk about things like this in videos every now and then. And even some of them I've deleted because I just, sometimes I feel like I say things in the wrong way, even if I'm saying the truth. And I, it's not my uh, desire to offend people, period. I wish the best for people in everything. But that means standing on the truth, you know, too. The best does. It doesn't mean telling somebody what they want to hear all the time. It means standing on the truth no matter what. That's what will set us free, ain't it? The truth. Nothing less. Telling somebody lies is kind of selfish in a way when you know that you're lying to them, really. When you know that you're telling somebody a lie and that it... Because lies don't do any good, do they? And when you know that you're telling somebody a lie, but you do it anyways, you're really doing that for your, you're doing that to help yourself, really. Um, you're not really doing what's in the best interest for them, the way I look at it. But yeah, anyways, I don't know why I'm even getting on all this. I guess that one question got me started on all this. But I guess I'm going to get off here soon. And because uh, I've done, I, this is my second live and I'm not, not sure how long it's, oh, it's 30 minutes already. So it goes by really quick and I'm not sure how long that other one was. But I guess I'm going to be going home Friday if they get me, if they don't get me loaded and I get this close to home and don't get to go home, I'm going to be pretty disappointed, honestly. But I guess I'll just have to camp uh, camp out here for the night or find somewhere close and uh, wait till the morning, early in the morning. But hopefully I can go tonight. 
But anyways, I'm going to get on off here. I wish all of you the best uh, with the truck and whatever you're doing. So long as it's good, I wish you the best with it. Good hearing from everybody, Clint. Uh, Matt, good talking to you. Uh, Jason. Ted. I think that's all of them on this one. It's good hearing from each and every one of you. I wish you the best with it. Some of y'all are already into it, like Matt. And, uh, and I appreciate the advice from you all. You all that have been doing it for a long time. But you all take care. Be safe and God bless. Appreciate everything.